Welcome back. Welcome back to the restoration shop. Paul, I am surely excited today. I went out and purchased us a new project. Indeed, it is going to be quite the job, but it's going to be a real interesting procedure. We're going to go through it. We're going to take you along with me on this, and we are going to solve a lot of problems with this project, but I am excited to get right at it. So let's take a look at it and see what we've got. Well, here we are. We have a Husqvarna. Yes, it's an LGT 2654. It's got a 54 inch deck on it and it is going to be an interesting project. So let's kind of take a look at it and see what we've got to deal with. Uh, first of all, I've been looking at the front tires and uh, they're surely going to need to be replaced. I mean, they take the beating for sure. Um, it's got a nice guard on the front brush guard. We're going to be uh, utilizing that for sure. Uh, the hood doesn't look too bad. Um, obviously everything's going to have to be cleaned and we're going to give this a new spray job for sure. Uh, the deck is in really good shape. I don't see much bad with the deck. Um, we get around to the other side. Tires look like new on the back. So that'd be really great. Uh, it's a hydrostatic. And uh, it's got some wear that it does. I mean, the seat has got some wear indeed. Uh, we probably are looking at replacing that seat. Uh, we're going to be taking off the back of the deck on here. So expose the hydrostatic underneath. Uh, we're going to be servicing that hydrostatic. Let's take a look at the motor. I am really interested in this motor. This is a beast in here. Right here, we've got an Intec 26 horse. Now. Here's where we lie with a problem. Supposedly the history on this motor is, this is not to be the original motor. It was replaced with this Intec 26 horse, but it's got an oil leak. And I don't know if the customer overfilled it at the time, but it seems to be down in the bottom here. It could be a seal around the crankshaft or it could be a gasket. I really don't know at this point. No, it's just like the last project we had. You got to investigate. You got to start tearing it apart and seeing where the oil is coming from. But apparently there is an oil leak under here. So we're going to be getting at that right away. But all in all, the meter itself shows a thousand hours. Now, I don't know if the motor has that on it. I heard the motor, it runs, it runs really nice. So I suspect that this could be a newer motor in here, but we're gonna be getting at it. So the first thing I wanna do is, I wanna take the hood off and I'm going to take this and get it uh, pressure washed Let's get some of the oil off of this project so we can get a better look at and see what it is that we have. So at this point, we've got the deck pulled out from underneath it. We had the hood removed. And now I'm getting ready to look where that oil leak is coming from. I want to start taking the outside of this motor apart. I'll take the shrouds off. I want to see if there's some place that's leaking. In the meantime, here is the deck. We got the deck off and we'll be going over that deck later and cleaning it up, checking the bearings, uh, spindles, uh, seeing what is wrong with it. If so, um, we're going to be bringing it up to where it's functioning at 100%. So at this point, Let's get to the motor and see if we can find where that leak is coming from before we take it out and have it pressure washed. Well, the first thing we're going to do is remove that air cleaner. You can see in the background I've got another project service going on and there's no spark. That's uh, a, a, a motor does not have a stator underneath the flywheel. It runs totally off of the coil, ignition coil. And so far, I have had a problem trying to get the spark to come out. I've got a new ignition coil ordered. Should be here today. But anyway, let's get back at this motor. Um, 
start ticking off these. Let me get a pair of pliers. And we will loosen it this one. Kind of interested to see what's inside this motor. I, you know, I'm always suspicious because you never know what you're going to get yourself into. And uh, everybody says it's this, it's that, the history. But in reality, until you look at it, I don't think anybody's really telling me what's really the truth until you look at it all. He's, well, air cleaner looks really clean. Oh, but it's dirty on that side. Hmm. Okay. We'll set that aside. I'll find a place for all these parts. We'll take the fan guard off the top because you need to remove this before you can remove the main shroud. So take this off. This is going to be a very big, big project. But I have really been getting kind of uh, uh, bored with the John Deere's and the Cub Cadets. I wanted to uh, come up with something a little different again. If you remember way back, we had a uh, Husqvarna. It had a uh, General, American General transmission. It was a plastic transmission. And they tried that in a few of the models as an experiment, which you could, it was all plastic and it was packed with oil. And you could actually buy the replacement kits if something went wrong and replace them yourself. And you could get all the replacement parts right out of Amazon. So, uh, that was kind of a trial run. I don't think it went over very well because of the clutch system that was in it always getting full of grass and then it would never, uh, clutch would never come back to neutral where it needed to be so everybody had to throw the, uh, the brakes on to stop it. But anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead now and loosen up these four nuts on the side here and then we'll get that pulled off. So what you want to do is you get yourself a 3 8 socket Unloosen these. You don't have to take them all the way off because what happens is this cover has got a slit in it where it'll slide past the uh, bolt bushing. And also remember, there is a screw in the middle here. Take that one out and then you should be able to remove the shroud on the top. Like so. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh my gosh, what was in there? Oh, wow. Let's take a look at this. Oh, my, my. Look at here. Oh, it looks like uh, grumbles or something was in there. Oh, my gosh. How could you cool down an engine like that? It would be running hot. Wow. See, this is what you get. This is what you get. Look at here. Everything's plugged up. Everything on that cylinder. And this is the side that's leaking. And so uh, I'm going to have to get the vacuum over here. And let's suck this all out and clean up all this extra whatever in here. Well, I hope this isn't too loud for you. So let's try it. This is bad. Take a look at this. That's this is bad. Oh my 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 my. Wow, 
you can kind of see the gremlins were in there. Woo! But we're going to have to get some air in here and blow this out and get in with a screwdriver, clean out those fins, make sure we can get light going through there. So let's do that next. Well, I'll tell you what a mess that was. What a mess. I got it all over myself. I feel like, oh, unbelievable. How could someone run a piece of equipment like that? There was no way for the air to even get in there to cool off those cylinders. Let's take a look at it now and see what we've got going on here. All right, now we got a light here. I can let a look down inside here. At least we've got uh, all the heavy dirt out of here. But you can see there are little critters that were in there. Let me get a light on here. You can see they uh, got the little uh, ground wire here uh, chewed up a little bit. And actually what this is is just a shut off ground that goes to your electronic switch on your dash. And what it does, it kills the uh, uh, power on your coils and stops your motor. But uh, we're going to have to rewire this. Uh, we're going to be cleaning up a lot of in here. We got a lot of rust on these coils. We'll check the coils out. You know, I was, I did listen to this motor today. It was running beautiful. I mean, it's smooth. It runs real great. But I'll tell you what, how in the heck could they cool that down? Oh my gosh. It's a good thing they didn't go any further with it because uh, it must have been stored someplace. And this is what happens when you have it sitting in a place that's not very well pest controlled. You'll start getting critters running around and uh, thinking that's their house. Indeed. And it's not. Got to kick them out. Got to kick them out. So let's get it. I'm going to go ahead now. I think what we're going to do is move this up to the pressure washer. Get everything all pressure washed. And uh, we'll take a look at it then. Well, you're looking at the top of the motor. And we did pressure wash some of it off, but you can sure see we got the flywheel off. We we're exposed to the stator. And what a mess in here as well. Pretty bad, pretty bad entirely. So we got a lot more cleaning to do here. We want to take this plate off of here, pull the starter out so we can check along the sides of the cylinders and see if it's not leaking there or a gasket. Uh, so far I haven't found anything that would make me feel as if it's leaking somewhere. So all we can do is just keep exploring, keep taking parts apart and kind of keep an eye open and see if we can find something. So we're going to continue with the dismantling of the motor. So at this point we'll get our socket out here and we'll start removing these bolts that are holding that. That one's not even tight. Okay. Move this one off. Well, I'm having a little second thoughts about this motor. I don't think uh, somebody was just that truthful. What I can see so far, it looks like nothing was taken care of here. It's really sad. You pay all this kind of money for a piece of equipment, and then you let it go to pieces like that. Take this off like so. And we'll put that aside. And what I want to do, I want to put these bolts, mounting bolts, back in place. That way you know where they are. Put this one in over here. And this one over here. This one down over here. Now there's no way of yet you're going to lose them. I like to do that. Kind of put bolts back you know and really helps a lot all right so now we got the top of the motor exposed and uh, I guess the next thing I want to do is get a wrench let's take these two mounting bolts out and we can pull the starter off and then I can kind of see what the side of the of the piston looks like on the cylinder we got our half inch wrench here now one thing you always want to remember that you need to mount the starter first before you put that top shroud on. Okay, otherwise you won't be able to get at this nut behind here. And uh, 
That is a real place that is not allowing you to get a wrench in there. Pull this up like so. This one off. There. Now, I want to put these back in place. And we'll put this one in place. Like so. And let's kind of walk around the other side here and take a look at the cylinder. Well, we're looking at the other side of the cylinder itself. And I don't really see any place, any cracks, anything that could say that there was a way of the oil to be uh, dripping from anywhere. All as I know is it's awful dirty here. And, uh, you know, it's going to get to the point where I think I'm going to have to pull this motor out of here. And uh, we'll have to take it apart and just see what is really going on here. Um, unless there's something on the other side, we can check the other side. But at this point, I don't see anything that would tell me that it's leaking anywhere. Sometimes these uh, drain. Uh, let me push this down here first so I can show you that. Sometimes these drains get dried out, and this is where you drain the oil on your uh, motor. I didn't see any oil as far as pooling up around here, uh, so I don't believe that this is a problem, but I do know that I throw these away. I like to hard pipe these in, have it come out here and then go down, and then you can, and you can just take the cap off the end, and then you can drain your oil that way. I don't like these. They, they dry out and they start leaking and then they start, uh, oil starts seeping down underneath your motor and it causes a mess all over the place. So it sure is uh, becoming to be an oil seal on the bottom, but uh, we definitely got to take this motor apart. We got to clean it up. It's, it's really, really a mess. Well, I think we've gone far enough today from exploring what we could see so far. We have not solved the problem yet. There are still some things to look at. So on our next video, that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be further investigating, trying to see what the problem is with the oil. Now, take note that this owner that sold me this piece of equipment, it's not his fault. It's the previous owner that he bought it from, where he had it stored and you know the little critters, the critters got in there and made a mess. So I'm thinking that that's probably why the previous owner that I bought it from had a problem because I feel the oil probably got hot, started bubbling out and forcing the oil out of the motor. So always remember, it's not what it looks like. It's always underneath what it looks like. You are getting the problems from some owner that sold you that equipment. It's out there for a reason because there's a problem with it. So it's like everything else, check your buyer out, check him out thoroughly, make sure that he's telling you the truth, truth about the history of the tractor before you buy it. Like I've always said, you go out, you purchase something at a low ball price, you're gonna end up with their problems. Always try to find a piece of equipment that has been gone through thoroughly. I have done it. That's what I do here to make sure that that product, when it leaves here, is in great shape. So keep that in mind very clearly. So like I said, on our next video, we're going to be going further into it, trying to check it out, make sure everything is solved with the oil problem. So if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I need subscribers. Do it. I thank you very much. Take care of yourself and I will see you on the next video.